Hey y'all, this is a video on graphing linear equations. Um, it's just based on graphing equations when they're in slope intercept form. But before we get into that, I want to kind of explain why we're doing this. The graph of a linear equation can give us a visual representation of the behavior of a function. So it just really gives us a picture of what our graph looks like. It can also tell us if a graph is rising or falling, what the intercepts are, how steep the slope is, what direction it's going. It just gives us a nice picture. So I want to orient you with a coordinate plane before we get started. In a coordinate plane, there is an x-axis and a y-axis. and it splits up the coordinate plane in two quadrants. In the center is the origin. The origin is 0, 0. So it might not be easy to tell which coordinate is x and which coordinate is y. Let's look at a different point. Let's say I went over 3, up 2, and put a dot. I would write that 3, 2. So anytime you write a point, it's x comma y. x is always first. Anytime you write or plot. If you plot the point, you go over 3, up 2. Uh, over 3 on the x-axis, up 2 on the y-axis. That's just kind of a review of a coordinate plane. And then here's what slope-intercept form is, which is the form we will be dealing with today it lets us quickly see the average rate of change, which represents the slope, and the y-intercept, which represents b. So it's already in this form where it's very easy to graph and very easy to see what the slope and y-intercept is. The formula for slope, based on two points, looks like this. We won't be necessarily going over how to use that, but it does help us understand this little memory device, rise over run. Rise is associated with the y axis because y goes up and down. And run is associated with the x axis because it goes side to side. So you're running on the little track. That's a person. And then the B value is the y-intercept, so that's where it crosses the y-axis. And it can serve as your starting point, and we will be plotting it first. Let's look at a couple examples here. We have y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 3. So we can easily see the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is negative 2 thirds, which is rise, or in this case fall, over run. The y-intercept is 3. Since it's on the y-axis, that point would be 0, 3. Over 0, up 3. So to graph this, you're going to start at 0, 3 fall to run 3. We fell 2 because it was a negative 2. So let's just plot that. I have a graph here. Our starting point, the point where we're going to graph first, is at 0, 3. From there we will go down 2 run one, two, three, and I'm going to put a dot there. Let's check my numbers, down two, run three, and I could keep going. Now I have two points, so through any two points you can draw a straight line. If you feel like you need a little more guidance, since it's an average rate of change, it's a constant rate of change, 
you can keep going down to run three down to run three or you could go up to left three up to left three and it still represents that same slope because negative two thirds is going to be the same as that because as long as there's only one negative then it's the same so we could go down to run three or we could go up to left three or if you looked at it this way I am going down to run three so there's just several ways to look at it but it is a constant rate of change and we could do several iterations of that to help us draw our line. If you're like me, you might have trouble drawing a straight line, so it just kind of gives you a little more guidance. And that's what it looks like. That line is, whoops, negative 2 thirds x plus 3. On this line are an infinite number of points. I just needed two pieces of information to draw the line. And now that I have a visual representation, I can tell you a whole lot more about the line. I can tell you the x-intercept. I can tell you some other points on the line. I can tell you what it looks like. Lots of really cool stuff. Okay, this one, negative 4x slope plus 5, that's the y-intercept, that's a point, and the slope is negative 4. I can write that as a fraction so that it's easy to plot or chart. So I'm going to start at 0, 5, then I'm going to fall for run 1. Fall for run 1. So let's do it. Start at 5, fall 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, run 1. So that's where I'm going to put my dot. If you're unsure, you can keep going with it. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, run 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, run one, and so on. You could go up four, one, two, three, four, left one, and that would follow the same pattern. And draw your line. Well, yeah. I'm still not very good at drawing a line, but I tried. There it is, slope-intercept form. This is really neat. This is not an example of slope-intercept form, but I wanted to show it to you because I feel like it's an important concept. So this just tells me that there is a line with a slope of negative one-half, and it gives me a point, not necessarily the y-intercept, actually not, this is not the y-intercept. So we don't know the y-intercept but we can start at this point. I mentioned on the previous page that there were an infinite number of points on this line. So it doesn't, you don't have to be given the y-intercept to start. You could have been given any point on this line because from any point on this line, it has that constant slope of, in this case, negative two-thirds, negative two-thirds, negative two-thirds, negative two-thirds, negative two-thirds. So you can start anywhere and still have that slope, and that's what this is showing. I'm going to start at this point, negative 1, 4, and then I'm going to chart my slope down 1 over 2, and I can keep doing that if I want to, down 1 over 2. I could go up 1, left 2 to follow the same pattern. That gives me a pretty good picture of this line. That's kind of what it looks like. And now I can see, I can kind of estimate 
where my y-intercept is. And so I can put over here that my y-intercept is at about 3.5. And honestly, from here, I have my, this is exciting, I have my slope, and I have my y-intercept, so I could actually write an equation with that information. Slope and y-intercept. And that would have been the equation of my line. Isn't that wonderful? So all of these examples were negative slopes. Let's look at some visual representations of some different kinds of slopes since they weren't represented in the lesson. We know that a negative slope, I'm just going to sketch one, goes down. If you're looking at the graph from left to right, it is falling. Which means that a positive slope is going to be going up. So if you can kind of envision a car That's my car. It's driving uphill. In this case, if I had a little car, it'd be driving downhill. Now think of a zero slope in a car. If a car is driving on a road with no slope, what do you think that would look like? It would be a flat surface. And so I'd have my little car here. It's like a slug bug or a smart car. For zero slope, it has zero incline or decline. It's a flat line. It goes through the, well, let's see. It goes through the y-axis. I can see that. Let's just chart my slope. If I start here, I'm going up zero over one, up zero over one, up zero over one. So I can say my slope is that, which simplifies to that. And if I were to write my equation, then m is 0. Whoops. There we go. Sorry about that. 0 times anything is 0. 0 plus b is just b. So the equation of a flat line is y equals a number. And then undefined, if you're thinking, if we're continuing the driving, if you're thinking about driving and something is undefined, you might envision a wall, trying to drive up a wall. So an undefined line would look like that. And if we chart the slope, we go up 1 over 0, up 1 over 0, up 1 over 0, up 1 over 0. And if I write that, you can't divide by 0 because there's no value times 0 that equals 1. So we would call this slope undefined. There's, there's nothing that can make this statement happen, simplify. So we call it undefined and then the slope is undefined. And what this looks like, since it goes through the x-axis, which is directly opposite from this one, we write it as x equals a number. So in this case, it would be x equals negative 3 because it goes through negative 3 on the x-axis. This one would be y equals 2 because it goes through 2 on the y-axis. And then back here, just to finish the table, this would be y equals negative mx plus b, and this would be y equals positive mx plus b. They're all technically y equals mx plus b. I'm just showing what the sign on M would be. So hopefully that kind of helps you, you know, figure out what your graph is telling you, 
figure out how to graph things. I hope this lesson helped you. If you have any questions, please let me know and I would be more than happy to help.